The lands and seas of the world of Warhammer are vast, mighty, and dangerous. The planet is home to a large variety of amazing and frightening species, including many different creatures and beasts that lurk in caves, tunnel networks, and underwater passages, creatures that roam the open fields or fly high above all others. What follows is a collection of works by the Doctor of Biology and Zoology from the University of Naun, Stefan Hoffman. This time we will explore the ancient and mythical creatures known commonly as dragons. We will travel to the sacred forest of Athelorin, and then to the magical island of Ulthuan to be able to see and study these creatures with our own eyes. Dragons still live in the world. They are ancient creatures of myth and fear. Unfortunately, they are often characterized by the common folk as spiteful, fire-breathing monstrosities that would burn a whole town just for the sake of it. Creatures that some believe are now thankfully extinct. This cannot be further from the truth. Dragons inhabit the deepest recesses of caves. They live in the middle of vast areas of greenwood, and they sleep in ancient tunnels and monumental halls. One of these locations is the place that the Wood Elves call their home, the glade and greenwood in Athelorin's enchanted forest. Nothing stays here for too long without changing, and forest dragons are no different. This is a race of giant flying creatures that have made a home in the forest and have lived in harmony for a very long time. They have adapted to life within the Greenwood. The gigantic dragons have gradually evolved into an extension of the forest's inherent determination to survive and thrive. Although they are still ravenous predators, they also go out hunting when the forest needs them and spend the rest of the time dormant. Annabella Evanbreath is the elven guide I was assigned to. She will take me through safe passages and hidden pathways through the woods to get a glimpse of one of the mighty forest dragons. It is important to note that the forest dragons are truly revered in this place, and they are seen as great creatures full of wisdom and power for they have existed for eons, and the race of elves grants them all the respect they deserve. As we contemplate the magnificence of one of these beings in its full splendor, Inabella tells me more about the nature of these dragons. Forest dragons are interesting beings that are much more than just a big beast that can kill and destroy with ease. These individuals are extremely bright and they take pleasure in expanding their knowledge. There are even tales of forest dragons that have spared their potential victims in exchange for a piece of information that enriched the dragon's knowledge. If the hostage's news is sufficiently valuable or intriguing, the old beast feels obligated to spare his life in exchange for the knowledge. Otherwise, the captive is inevitably devoured on the spot for unwittingly wasting the dragon's time such as their sacred and proud nature. When the forest spirits are unable to stop an invasion of the sacred lands of Athelorin, at times when the forest senses a dire threat, it will awaken one or more forest dragons to deal with the invaders. And when fully ready for war, a dragon is truly a sight to behold. Even an immature dragon has a massive, scaled body that is powerfully built and strong enough to shatter city gates. A dragon's wings are immense, able to bear it effortlessly through the sky and get quickly to the place where it's needed the most. They are a terrifying foe, for they are not mindless monsters, but cognizant, intelligent beings with an alien logic and a wealth of experience that only one of the eldest races in the world can have. The claws on their massive paws can rip through stone, and their jaws are armed with enormous fangs. 
The dragon's soporific breath can cause any man to collapse instantaneously, and there is no armor that can defend against it. So even if an enemy escapes the Talon's grasp, they are not completely secure from the dragon. On occasion, the elves will petition the assistance of a dragon in order to serve as a steed for a glade lord. This is a request that the beast accedes to with reasonable grace when the purpose is justifiable, provided it was not disturbed from a particularly fascinating dream. Some individuals who have the good fortune, or misfortune, of actually seeing a glade lord riding a dragon may be under the impression that the dragon has been tamed in the same way that a, a horse would be. This is a common misconception. It is an inaccurate assumption that's been brought about by the ignorance that is only to be expected from races with such a lack of wisdom. In reality, the dragon itself grants permission for a wood elf rider to mount the creature into battle on its back. A connection between rider and dragon develops through time, leading to the two becoming friends and allies, rather than merely comrades in times of need. Because this connection is forged over generations, it is difficult for creatures with shorter lifespans, such as orcs or humans, to fully comprehend it. When the time to defend the sacred forest comes, the huge dragons are one of the most potent manifestations of the forest's fury, and they strike without mercy when the situation calls for it. The forest dragons have turned the tide of many key battles throughout the history of Athaloran. Ferocious monstrosities that are not easily matched, few are able to hold their ground against their rage unless they have mastered the basic terror that is evoked solely by its aspect. As I learn about this creature, I realize that I really like this place. It has a unique sense of wonder that I, I cannot explain, and to add, I feel secure here, knowing that the elves, forest spirits, and the mighty dragons take care of this forest. Unfortunately, I, I'm not allowed to stay here for long, and Inabella is already showing me the way out. As I leave the sacred forest of Atheloran, I can't help but feel a sense of awe and reverence for the ancient trees and magical creatures that call this place home. The air around me is thick with the scent of exotic flowers and the hum of unseen magic. I turn back to look at Atheloran one last time. I can still hear the whispers of the trees and the magical creatures, and I, I feel an uplifting sense of gratitude for the time I just spent. Now it's time to sail to Althuan to learn about the mighty dragons that live in that place. I have a good friend in Kalador that will show me around and will even let me stay for some days there. After days of navigation on a trip that was mainly without trouble, I catch my first glimpse of Ulthuan in the distance. The island rises up from the sea like a majestic jewel, its shores lapped by the gentle waves of the ocean. I can see towering cliffs and sandy beaches, and I can feel the excitement and anticipation building up inside of me. Suddenly I find myself navigating through a river with crystalline waters, and making our way to the meeting point. I can already feel the peace that is commonly felt in this place, as the legends say, although in the distance I can hear the rumbling of the vortex that continuously spins with magic energy to keep the forces of the war at bay. Not long after, Scythabron, a dragon lord of Kalador, receives me and warmly welcomes me into Althuan. Together we make our way into the realm of Kalador, where my friend tells me about the mighty dragons that still live there. 
as we walk through the realm, I am struck by the beauty and grandeur of the land. The rolling hills and lush forests are unlike anything I have ever seen before. Our brethren from the oldest times, the purest and truest expression of the power of life that this world has to offer. Once the skies were filled with their graceful forms, and they danced about the thermals that flow over the mountains in intricate mating rituals that were a joy to behold. They sat at the feet of Vor and set their fiery breath to heating his forges. When we went to war against the forces of chaos, they carried the greatest of our heroes upon their backs, and they were ever the first to engage the enemy, and the last to withdraw from the field. Now they dwindle, as do we all, and their song is fading to memory. When they perish entirely, so I think shall we, and perhaps that is only proper. As I see the mighty dragons flying in the air, I catch myself observing the creature with awe and reverence, but also a touch of sadness, as I learn that in days long gone by, there used to be a much greater number of these wonderful beasts flying in the skies. Now the times have changed. The dragons currently spend their time dreaming away the years in the immense tunnels that can be found buried deep within the Dragonspine Mountains. There are three main types of High Elf Dragons, and they are differentiated from one another based on their advancing age and, consequently, their growing levels of knowledge and power. On Ulth One, currently, there are not many new dragons being raised, but the elves know these young ones as sun dragons, due to their fiery tempers and the vibrant warm coloration of their scales. It is known that the sun dragons can be awoken from their great slumbers faster than their older kin. And mind you, this is not a matter of pressing a wooden stick against the sleeping beast, no. There are certain rituals and preparations that must be done. The dragon waking songs and rituals have been kept secret for ages. Caledonian mages have set binding spells on anyone who would uncover the secrets of reawakening a dragon. And it is widely known that anyone who would ever seek to divulge their knowledge will perish. The dragons continue to mature throughout their lifetimes, and dragons of any color are capable of attaining enormous sizes if they live for a sufficiently long period of time. Those who grow older over the centuries are known as moon dragons, and are, of course, bigger and wiser than the younger sun dragons. They are so ancient that they were around long before the time of Anarian the Defender, and participated in the battles against the demons that came from the first invasion of Chaos. The most ancient and potent of Ulthuan dragons are referred to as Star Dragons, because they are essentially as old as the very same stars that make up the cosmos. These dragons are known for their great age and power, and are even capable of fighting against the most powerful of beings in existence, such as greater demons. These dragons are known to have routed entire armies on their own on many occasions throughout history, and have changed the course of entire wars and events. The days go by at peace in Ulthwan, and every day I learn something new about the dragons and the elves that live in this continent. The elves are tall and graceful, with sharp features and piercing eyes that show how smart and wise they are. In a weird but interesting resemblance to the dragons they so much revere. They are great at the art of magic and the strategies of war, and their cities are architectural and artistic marvels. 
My time here has been nothing but wonderful, but it is time to leave and travel to faraway lands. The next type of dragon to study is a very peculiar one, but an unexpected event occurred before I could depart. As I was making preparations to travel to Nagaroth to learn more about the black dragons that reside there, my elven friend revealed to me some disturbing information. There have been reports that an invading army of dark elves were making their way to Ulthuan. Were they planning a siege? Were they trying to steal dragon eggs? I wouldn't know, but I am warned of this and I am conscious of the fact that it is impossible for me to leave Ulthuan at this time, and that I will be required to remain here until the invasion has been successfully repelled. As the news spreads through the realm, a palpable sense of urgency can be felt. The elves are working hard to get ready for the invasion, and all over Ulthuan, defensive plans and procedures are being put into action. They move swiftly, and in great synchronization, as if they had practiced the procedures thousands of times already. With the uncommonly long lifespans of the elves, I wouldn't be surprised if that were the case. The day of the invasion draws near, and I have done my part to help in the preparations, and all I have to do now is... is wait. I see the steely determination of the defenders, ready to fight for their home and their people. The Dark Elves are getting closer by the day.